We'll take you on a brief tour, virtual tour, if you will, through Egypt. <clears throat> this one's on ancient Egypt. As you can see, the sun and the Ankh coming down. The symbol of sun, light, and life coming down from Aten, from the Aten. And these are some of my sources. Also, our metanetter.com. Um, a few, those are a few of my sources. Pretty much all the picture sources. We go on. We're gonna start with symbols from Egypt. As I will take you to this tour. Journey through the mysteries of Egypt. Where even in India, they talk about the Sohar key and the Sohar schools of masonry. And of course, they have regular schools there. <laughs> and who is this lady? Is it the Mona Lisa? Is it the Statue of Liberty? Actually, this is a painting I got when I typed in Queen Semiramis. Semiramis. As you can see, the resemblance is striking. And we go on. Symbols of Masonry. Oh boy. Should I even start? You'll see the Totenkampf on the right side in the middle. Obviously, the sun symbols, the triangle, the ladder, the compass, the tree of life, the keys of masonry, the five point star pointed upwards, the symbol of the moon with the appropriate amount of stars, seven. We have another triangle over here. And we go on also we have the Ark and the Ark on top of the poles, Jachin and Boaz from King Solomon's Temple. Notice the symbolism of the magician, if you will. And also it's important to note the boat on top, the solar boat comes from Egypt. We go on. As you can see right here, the symbols of the tears and the symbols of the arcs around them forming a circle. Socrates, 500 years before Christ, as you can see the Europeans do not resemble the ancient Egyptians in their statues. Now we will start the tour on top with Giza. The Great Pyramids of Giza, they line up with Orion's belt, and, and you can see the ones in the front have suffered some deterioration. They all have suffered some weathering over time. Again, the pyramids. This is a map. You can see the Pyramid of Khufu, the top right in the center, the Pyramid of Khafre, and the last pyramid on the bottom left of Men Cairo one way they refer to them. And we go on, you know, you have the Western Cemetery, the Eastern Cemetery, uh, you, have, you have temples of Khafre, you got temples of the Queen, you got the Temple of the Sphinx, you got the Great Sphinx, which is, you see on your way to the pyramids. And we continue. The Sphinx. Rumor has it that Napoleon shot the nose off the Sphinx. Let me go on. Now we will go down one city to Saqqara. And the temples therein. The Hanging Pyramid, also known for its steps. This didn't come out that well. I was dreading to turn the clip because I was worried that this might happen, but it's a, basically it's a diagram of the purpose of it and the pylons and the uh, next picture. Th this is some hieroglyphics as well as some pictures 
of Egyptians inside the temple of Saqqara. We go on. Now we go down to El Armana, where Akhenaten, during the 18th dynasty, moved the capital. It's important to notice that I'm going downward. So we're about at the center, and I passed up a few places. I apologize. I passed up El Fayum. I passed up Hermopolis. And I, I'm going to pass up Tuna El Gebo as well, and Beni Hassan. And so we go to Ilamana. We start with um, Akhenaten in the form of the Sphinx praying to the sun. We go on to some of the leftover structures inside and some more hieroglyphics. I'm just going to skip through this one pretty quick. And we go down to Abydos. Abydos is pretty much one of the first cities, 3200 BCE. Uh, well, let's show you some stuff here. Uh, here is Osiris's, the temple of Osiris at Abydos. Beautiful temple. Beautiful steps. Um, the masonry adopts the symbolism from this. In the ancient mysteries. You know, they, they, they call, they, my problem with masonry is they include Egypt as part of the ancient, ancient, ancient mysteries as, instead of the source of the ancient mysteries. God, then Egypt, and everyone else. Inside of Abydos. Remember, Osiris is the Lord of the Dead and the Father of the Trinity. And we go on to the next one, which is Karnak. And Karnak and Luxor are located in the Thebes, the ancient city of Thebes. So, Karnak, you have the Eastern Temple. You have the courtyard of the Middle Kingdom, and you have, you have about six pylon, uh, pylons on the map. The first pylon is at the entrance. Okay, so as you pass through it, you get to the Temple of Seti II, and then you pass through what is called a Great Hall. Just like in masonry, you have the Great Hall, and the Grand Hall, and, and um, certain kinds of masonry are named after that. And you, you go on, If you look on to, I mean, um, to the upright, there's a sacred lake. And if you go on to the right, you'll get to the seventh pylon all the way to the tenth. And then on through the District of Mud and Avenue of uh, Sphinxes. So if you notice how that is, it's six pylons going up and then another four to the right. It's important to notice the purpose of the pylons and the purpose of the temples and the gates, etc. And we go on. The sacred lake, remember all the references to the water in the Bible and whales and certain important key characters in the Bible getting thrown into whales and then getting taken on into Egypt by passing Ishmaelites etc. Now we go on to Karnak and the statues and the hieroglyphs and the different statues to the gods you'll find there and the pillars, and it's beautiful. I don't know what time I'm at, so I'm going to try to breeze through this because I want to read something in the end as well. We go down to, um, this is more Thebes, you know, Karnak and Luxor area. And here's Luxor, the temple of Luxor at, in the ancient city of Thebes in that area. And we look on you know, you're going to see the ram-headed gods, you're going to see Horus, you're going to see Set, you're going to see a lot of these stuff. Now, this is the layout. You have the solar cult court, the hypostyle hall, the second court, the royal palace outer court. Royal, you've got the chapel of the royal cult and enclosure walls and sanctuaries within. And first pylons at the entrance. Just like um, you have the two pillars, Jachin and Boaz, outside of King Solomon's temple. We go on. Luxor, beautiful. I'm going to Idfu and the Temple of Horus. Important to note that Armana, you know, back it was 1353, and you get Abydos and Thebes around 3200 BCE. So we go on to Edfu and the Temple of Horus, and there's not much pictures, but I, I really like them—the solar boats and, and the statues. And it's very, you know, the personified gods. 
and you go on to Aswan. So now, if you look at the map, we're on the bottom part of the map. We're heading... We're, we're basically in, you know, the Nubian part of town, if you will. It's definitely getting darker. We're talking about black people in the ancient world, but it's definitely getting darker as you go down toward Nubia. And speaking of Nubia, and some of the temples at Nefer, uh, Nefertari, Nefertiti built in Nubia. And we're going to, well, well, first let's touch on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Philae, the bottom one, the last one I'm going to touch on. Beautiful picture, as you can see. This is Pharaoh making offering to the gods. Just like people are making offering to Pharaoh. There's like a, a Mayat, the divine order. It's an obelisk. This obelisk, I believe, it's either in France or England, I believe, and it was stolen from Philae, I believe. Because there's so many stolen uh, obelisks, you know, in France and in England, etc., and even in America. So this is the layout of Philae. You can't really see it. Temple at Philae. This is the end. Um, hopefully I didn't go over because I can't see the time. The Indiana Jones series were about the white man going into Egypt and digging up for the truth um, and the Masonic implications therein so basically I'm going to give you a quick run through of the temples and from my one of my sources we go Temple of Sim Simbel is in Nubia you got the Oracle of Amun in the Agami Temple I'm, I'm going to go through about half of these Temple of Amenhotep III on the west bank of Luxor you have Aten, the great temple of in Armana. You got the temple of Bess in Bawiti, Baharia. You have the temple of Dender in New York. Because um, you can see a lot of these temples were, were stolen, just like the obelisks. You have um, on the West Bank of Luxor, El Medina, Temple of Hercules in Baharia. Of course, the Temple of Horus in Idfu, and you have a Temple of Kal Kalabasha, excuse me, Kalabasha in Nubia, and of course, the the Mentuhotep II has a mortuary temple on the west bank of Luxor. Mer um, Ptah has a mortuary temple in Luxor as well on the west bank. Nekbet and Dot have temples at El Cab. On the Nile Temple, on the Nile Delta, you have minor temples and other ruins, like the ruins of the Temple of Set. Um, you also have lost temples in Nubia. Um, more temples at Thebes. The temples of Ramsey the uh, Fourth is in the Ramesid. You have you have the Chapel of the White Queen. Chapel of Seti the First, the Platon, the Ptolemaic Temple. Excuse me, I always say the P when I mean not to, because when I'm reading for something, or I'm reading, or I'm checking my notes to refresh my memory. We go on. I'm just gonna touch on, you know, Ramses the First. Ramses the Second has a portal temple at Abydos. Ramses the Second also has a temple at Minya. Ramses the Third, West Bank of Luxor Temple, and of course at Alexandria, you have temples. The Serapian Temple, Pompey's Pillar, uh, in in the Sinai. You know the Satis Temple of Aswan and Censoret the Third Mortuary Temple and so on. So as you can see, I've proved my point about some cults are based around temples, some around pharaohs, some around gods, and I've explored that a little bit in this video, and I'm gonna end it there. Thank you.